How's it going folks? In this video, we take a look at the Keychron Q1 75% mechanical keyboard. This thing is ridiculously customizable. So let's go ahead and unbox the Keychron Q1. 75% uh, layout, dual compatibility with Mac and Windows, tons of customization. So let's go ahead and unbox it right now and see what's inside. So first of all, you get a coiled aviator style USB type C cable, which has a quick disconnect, USB-C on both ends, and it uh, Keychron includes a USB-C to USB-A adapter in the box as a courtesy. Keychron also includes Windows centric keycaps, an accessory pack with extra feet, screws, etc. And of course the keyboard itself. So let's go ahead and pull it out of the box and notice below you get the quick start guide. And then below that you get some additional accessories like a keycap puller. You also get a Phillips screwdriver, you get an Allen wrench, and you also get a switch puller, which we'll be putting to use. So let's go ahead and unwrap the Keychron Q1. And there we go. First thing you notice, beautiful anodized all aluminum casing. So the Keychron Q1 looks very similar to the Keychron K2, which I've reviewed previously. But obviously this is a much higher quality keyboard. It's heavier at 3.5 pounds thanks to that all aluminum chassis. And the design lines are not unlike Tesla's Cybertruck, which is really cool. Now, one thing I appreciate, the weight keeps it firmly planted on the desktop. Don't have to worry about it moving around whatsoever thanks to that 3.5 pounds of mostly aluminum. Now inside the keyboard case, you have several different layers. You have a foam layer. You of course have the PCB. You also have an aluminum plate and all these can be more or less customized. And just to reiterate, solid metal chassis. Now if you wanna access the internals of the keyboard to maybe add a customized brass plate, well, you can do so via the screws. The, you just use your included Allen wrench to unscrew it and access the internals of the Q1. Now, while the K2 had some aluminum parts, it had a lot of plastic as well. For instance, the little switch on the side of the K2 was a plastic switch. It wasn't very tactile, but here you get a nice metal switch to switch between Windows and Mac mode. And it's placed in a very strategic location out of the way of your fingers, not located on the side like the K2. Now, although I probably won't be using this button much since I am mainly a Mac user, I definitely appreciate the tactile design, makes it easy to find and easy to switch on or off. Now, obviously the most important part of any keyboard is the typing experience, right? It comes with a very nice incline built right in. This is a 5.2 degree permanent angle that's built in, so you don't have to worry about adjusting any feet, anything like that, it's ready to go out of the box and ready to type. Now in my previous two Keychron keyboards, I opted for brown switches, which provide sort of a tactile uh, response when pressed. But as you can see here, my Q1 came pre-configured with Gatoron red switches, which provide a linear response. So let's go ahead and remove the keycaps using the included keycap puller, just pull up like that. And there you can see the Gatoron red switch right underneath. Now let's go ahead and remove the other three keycaps for the arrow keys. And as you saw, it's super easy to remove the keycaps and replace it with other keycaps if you'd like to. And Keychron sells a variety of different color keycaps that you can use to create a custom look. Now let's go ahead and show you how to remove these and install some alternative keycaps if you wanna do so, it's super easy. Just go ahead and pull off the keycaps there and simply press the new keycaps on top of the switches to install. Super simple, super easy. But here's where the Q1 shines. Not only are the keycaps replaceable, but the switches themselves are replaceable, not by using the key puller, but by using the switch puller, which is right here. So it's super easy to remove those switches. Just put the switch puller at the top and bottom of the switch, squeeze and pull up just like that. So now, you remove the switch and you can see the switch pins. These are solderless switches, so you don't have to do any soldering. You just pull them out and reinstall on the fly. Totally hot swappable switches. Now, this is a good opportunity to let you hear the aluminum plate. So you can hear that sound. You hear the key coming into contact with that aluminum plate. Like I said, that plate can also be customized with different plates if you desire to do so. 
Now I have a set of Gatoron brown switches here. I'm gonna pull one out of the package just like this. And you can see compared to the red switch, on the outside, they look basically the same outside of the color, of course, but it's really the, the tactile response that you get that makes the difference. So we're simply going to insert the brown switch back in, make sure the pins are pointed towards the top, and then simply press in to secure in place. We'll do the same thing for the red. So we got the brown and the red, setting it up for a nice comparison. So you can see the red have the very linear response. You press it, it goes all the way down, no click involved. It is a smooth response. Now notice the difference with the brown, you get a clicky response or a tactile response. It isn't fully linear, so it's not a smooth press from start to finish, but you notice a little click involved there where it requires a little bit more force to fully depress the switch. So you can see how it works with the keycaps installed, linear pressing, smooth motion from start to finish. And then on the brown switches, you get a little click as you press down and it requires a little bit more force to fully actuate the switch. So that's the difference between the brown and the red. Of course, there's all sorts of key switches out there. You can use which one's best for you. Now, here also with the Keychron Cube 1, you get these right here, these stabilizers, which are Gatoron stabilizers that are screwed into the keyboard PCB itself, which gives you stabilization for keys that are extra large, like the return key or the spacebar key, etc. It's a really nice feature, just provides overall stability to the typing experience. Now, as far as customizing your keyboard from a software perspective, you can do so using the VIA configurator. And VIA is an extension of QMK, which allows you to go in and customize things like macros, remap your keys, set up your media controls, etc. And there are also layers that correspond to Windows and Mac machines. You also have a handy key tester here in VIA, which allows you to make sure that all of your key switches are installed properly in registering and being recognized. So of course, this is a very high level look at VIA. Lots of ways you can customize your mechanical keyboards using VIA. Now, of course, one of the characteristics of Keychron keyboards is the RGB lighting. And here on the Q1, you have a south facing RGB setup. And you notice that the key switches actually have a little hole at the bottom to let that light shine through, which is positioned at the very bottom of the key. That way you can easily see the light coming toward the user as you can see right here. And there are many ways to customize the lighting. You can toggle the RGB lights on or off. You can of course change the brightness, either dim it or make it brighter using the key combination. You can also change the pattern if you wanna do that. So you have like a breathing pattern and then you have it where it cycles through and you can change the hue and the saturation of the backlight as well. Needless to say, there are lots of ways to go in and customize the RGB here on the Q1. And what's interesting is that the lighting is influenced by the color of the key switches. So in this case, you're gonna have more of a red tint. Now the Q1 features a USB type C port in the upper left hand corner that's tucked out of the way. You don't have to worry about it interfering with your typing, that is very nice. It does, however, lack Bluetooth connectivity, which is gonna be a non-starter for some users, understandably. Now, the cable is a canvas aviator style cable with a coil. Uh, to me, the cable just screams like over-engineered and it's not really necessary, but some users will no doubt appreciate it. But the elephant in the room is the complete lack of Bluetooth connectivity. Now I find Bluetooth sort of unreliable with Mac computers in general, so it's not a huge deal for me, but I know some users won't like that at all. So to conclude, this is the Keychron Q1. It comes with customizable, hot swappable switches, keycaps, and much more. The whole nine yards. This keyboard is extremely customizable. It is exquisite to type on, and it's designed like a work of art. If you can get past the lack of Bluetooth and you're super serious about your keyboards, then this is definitely a keyboard you should consider checking out. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.